during the colonial period in this country, only 15% of white people in this country, 15, one, five, identified with a certain church. The vast, vast majority of them were deists. What does deist mean? A deist in the spirit of Plato and Aristotle and the Neoplatonists is someone who believes in an architect of the universe, but that the creator of the universe, but that this creator does not have any personal relationship with his creation. He doesn't reveal scripture, he doesn't send messiahs, he doesn't send prophets. He has no relationship with his creation. This is deism. And it's really an outgrowth of the 18th century enlightenment movement as a reaction against Christianity, specifically against Christianity. This is just a fact. They were anti-incarnation. They were anti-Trinitarian. They were anti-vicarious atonement. Their theology was based on reason. So I don't know what these people are talking about when they say America was founded by a Christian nation. Here's another fact for you. None of the first six presidents of the United States was an Orthodox Christian. None of the first six presidents of the United States was an Orthodox Christian. You look at some of them. George Washington was a deist. He rejected the deity of Christ. He would not take Holy Communion. John Adams was a Unitarian. He did not believe in the Trinity, the deity of Christ, original sin, or vicarious atonement. Jefferson was a deist and a Unitarian, anti-Trinitarian. He once wrote, wrote a letter to Timothy Pickering on his cabinet complaining about the, uh, what did he say, the incomprehensible jargon of Trinitarian arithmetic, as those are his words. He was anti-Pauline. He said, Paul corrupted Christianity. He said, and I don't agree with this statement. I'm just giving you the facts. He said, Christianity is the most perverted system ever shown on man. That's his words, not my words. I don't agree with it. I'm telling you what Thomas Jefferson said. Thomas Jefferson, who's on the $20 bill. No, the $2 bill, right? This was his belief about America, about Christianity. I certainly don't agree with it. But to those who say this country was founded as a Christian nation, implying that non-Christians in this country are somewhat less American than Christians is a total farce. And we shouldn't buy into that. Thomas Paine, in 1776, he wrote Common Sense, which paved the way for the Declaration of Independence. He says something similar to Thomas Jefferson. I don't have time to go into it. The U.S. Constitution has no reference to God nor Jesus Christ. The U.S. Constitution, one of the founding documents of this country, was transcribed or written upon the principle of separation of church and state. Article 6, Section 3. No religious test shall be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. So while God nor Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, are mentioned in the Constitution, religion is mentioned twice. That's one. And then the First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of any type of religion. Declaration of Independence, three references to the deity, an impersonal, abstract, deist God, not the Christian God. He's called nature's God. He's called, he says, we're endowed by our creator. He's called the supreme judge of the world. And finally, the Treaty of Tripoli in 1797. You can look up this stuff. You can check Sheikh Wiki for the meantime, but don't trust it too much. Sheikh Wikipedia, right? But be careful about that. But look this up, you know, there's good information. The Treaty of Tripoli in 1797. This is very interesting. Signed into law by President John Adams in 1780, uh, 1797. I'm sorry, 1797. June 10th, 1797. This is what it says in Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli. As the government of the U.S. of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian nation, as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslim men. Who are Muslim men? These are Muslimin. And as the said states never entered into any way or act of hostility against the Muhammadan nation, that's the Muslim Ummah, is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interruption of the harmony existing between the two nations. How far we have fallen from the words of the Founding Fathers.